Bonnie has a chance of finishing things off. India one hit away. Before we talk about the stocks, let's think about the scale of these matches. There are 48 matches, 12 different venues, and 10 different teams. And there'll be 8 lakh people going to these stadiums, watching these matches physically. I mean, think about it. That's the population of Amsterdam. The last time we had the World Cup in 2011, it was $300 million added to the Indian economy. That's like three Mars missions. But the scale and the timing and India has changed since 2011. And 2023 is going to be epic. So now let's talk about the direct impact. As a result of the World Cup, how much money comes in? Because you, the consumer, starts to spend. And so do businesses. <laughs> First, let's start with ticket sales. This one is very simple. You have a simple ticket. We expect almost 800 crores to come through just ticket sales of people going to these stadiums and actually purchasing this to attend it. In fact, just like olden times when ticket black mein bitta tha, these tickets are also being sold for over 1 lakh rupees because, well, Everything is in a market and Indians are naturally entrepreneurs. The next thing is cable television. So when you look at cable, we expect almost 3000 crores to come from cable television. And I'm not talking about ads. These are people paying their local cable provider or organized cable providers to get them access. So Star Sports basically, but paying for that channel. There are multiple companies like Den and Hathaway, which actually supply this. Don't underestimate the cable market. People are not on Hotstar. Go TV dekhre. Cable pay. Next, we have sponsors. Now, these are sponsors you see on the cricket field and all these guys are sponsoring. But the cost really varies. So, I'll draw a quick building right here. And these guys pay a lot because the viewership of this is crazy. Think about the Asian Cup. The Asian Cup recently had so many viewers and the World Cup will be far, far more than that. And this goes from almost 100 crores to 1,000 crores. Perhaps a average of this is likely to be roughly about 400 crores each and all these guys are playing and paying for those matches. And then of course we have travel, air travel and people staying in hotels and you can't imagine what this is. Air travel is at 90-91%. If this is bad, they don't make money, they should quit because this is the height. We also have October, which is the season of festivities. People will be traveling for home, people will be traveling to different cities, meeting their friends, and of course, watching a match. 91% is what I'm going to put over here as occupancy rates for this. And then, of course, we have hotels. Hotels, on the other hand, are almost 100%. You might have heard this before, Hotel industry suffers from seasonality and this is the season to be merry. In this time, they're actually looking at an occupancy of almost 100%. And when something like this happens, demand and supply kicks in and prices go up. It is being said, hotels that go for 10,000 rupees a night are going for multiple lakh rupees or at least a lakh rupees per night for the India-Pakistan match. Not only that, we've heard that people are booking hospital beds because there are no hotels and therefore the... I don't believe in fake news, but this was hilarious. <laughs> Air travel and hotels are fixed cost companies, which means that they have a fixed cost to create the rooms, maintain the rooms. Wo paisa jana hi jana hai. Same thing with the plane. Even if you have 15 people, the plane still needs to fly the hostesses, the stewards, and the fuel needs to be paid for, and so does the hangar, etc. So the only variable over here becomes the number of people that you can actually occupy. In a factory, we look at capacity utilization. In air travel and rooms, we look at number of rooms taken. 
So if there are 100 rooms available and 100 of them are taken, it's a 100% occupancy rate. Same for a plane. If there are 50 seats and all 50 are taken, well, that's a 100% occupancy rate. In over here, we can see the occupancy rates are really high. So ideally, these guys should be making a lot of money. So all of this was direct impact. And this totally comes to about 2,500 crores. But there's also an indirect impact. And I think this is the most interesting part because we don't think of it like this. The first is actually telecom. Think about it, you will purchase a Reliance Geo or Vodafone Idea or Airtel data pack to actually watch something. And this is exactly why people like us can watch the match for free on places like OTT where Hotstar, Reliance Geo, etc, etc. And we don't pay anything for it. But who's paying for it? There's nothing free in this world. So you guessed it, you are being charged where you are the product and I'll just call that ads and this actually generates a tremendous amount of income for the OTTs to actually sustain because they paid a lot of money for the rights to be broadcasted to you. Think about it, the average ad costs only this much in the country for something like the World Cup. But compare that to the NBA or wait, what's that thing they do in America? The Super Bowl. There the ad cost is far, far more. It shows that the scope of India's ad industry has yet to grow a lot more. And I wonder what it'll be 10 years from now. The total indirect impact is actually pretty high. All of this comes out to about 3000 plus crores. And that's what's being contributed. Now we'll move to the best part of the video, the stocks. The stocks I'm going to tell you has one disclaimer that you should understand. Over the internet, everyone is trying to tell you what stocks to buy because of the World Cup. And while it may sound convincing, there is one problem here. The stock market is a long-term weighing machine. One event, even as large as the World Cup, does not change the industry. For example, we know that Indigo or some other aircraft companies might do well in the short term. Some hotel companies might do well in the short term, but that does not make the industry different. So as an investor, you should know all of this is already priced in. Take a look at these two stocks. They've already rallied pricing in this movement. So if you're trying to buy the stock now, it is way too late. You will lose money. I'm sorry I had to tell you this right at the end of the video, but it's important for you to know the truth. But nevertheless, it's damn interesting to know how the economy is connected to the market and what stocks will be impacted. So let's start with air travel. With air travel and hotels, the fundamentals don't change. These are high capex businesses where a lot of money goes. And in the case, it also costs a lot of money to run and they have low margins. In the short term, it's very good for them. But I think companies like Indigo or ITC, etc. may not benefit way too much, even Indian hotels in the long term, because that doesn't change the structure of the industry. If there is hype around the World Cup, which it will, it could possibly translate into gaming as well. And if it does, this stock would be affected. Now, will this stock go up or not? I have no clue, but it's interesting that it's connected right here. And I didn't know Nazara did this stuff. Next is not a company, but a person, Mr. Ravi Khan Jaipuria, who actually owns two companies through his children, Varun Beverages and Devyani International. That's Pizza Hut and Pepsi. I want you to imagine what companies do really, really well. One, which get a lot of repeat customers. And second, there is an emotional purchase. In the case of gaming, especially real money gaming, the emotion is greed and that works really well. That's why the wedding sector does well, because there you have blissful love and high emotions from parents and that industry does well. Then we also have Pepsi. It's interesting that Pepsi has no health benefits. It's not good for you. It spikes your sugar and it's probably not good, especially you, you're 25 year old plus watching this, not exercising, not good at all. But they're great companies because they tap on one emotion, happiness and celebration. Every time you have that, the first thing you think is, let me drink or let me have a Pepsi slash a Coke. These companies will actually capitalize on the emotional euphoria of the Cricket World Cup and that will cause Pepsi to do well over the longer term. 
on the other hand we also have pizza which is devyani international i also think jubilant is interesting over here because when you have a bunch of friends i've genuinely felt one wants hakka noodles one wants momos damn confusing order a damn pizza it seems to be interesting and i think you can get that pizza delivered home it just improves your life it's so much easier of course now we have zomato and swiggy but think about this the emotion being tapped through in this entire october season will be happiness and cheer how would these companies do i'd love to know what you think tell me what you think about it in the comments below and tell us what you thought about this right we put in some effort over here trying to explain this and we thought it was a nice case study tell me something in the comments hit that like hit that subscribe and i'll see you soon in the next video before we talk <coughs> sorry shiva transform transform more <laughs> come on come on yeah come on yeah sudarth come on badhiya badhiya